Welcome to episode 6 of the Pogue McGoal podcast. My name is James Carew, co-editor of Pogue McGoal website and magazine, and you're listening to the sixth edition of the podcast accompanying the release of our sixth print issue. Thank you for all your support and your fantastic reaction to both our latest magazine and the podcast series to date. On Pogue McGoal, we look at the culture behind football, which is so much more than just goals and statistics. We explore stories from our home country of Ireland and around the world through writing, illustration and imagery with contributors from a League of Nations. You can order your copy of Issue 6 from pogmagold.bigcartel.com. 64 pages where football meets design. On today's episode, we're joined by another contributor to Issue 6 of the magazine, this time in the form of photography, and we'll be diving into his photo essay shortly. But first, I'm delighted to be rejoined by guest host Taylor Geale, who works in media relations in London and is a former print journalist. Welcome back, Taylor, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me back. Have you enjoyed the usual festive fair of football? Uh, Yeah, it's been good because obviously I'm in London, couldn't go home to see my folks, so having loads of football to watch was a massive, uh, massive plus. So yes, I have. Let's try to start the new year with a positive. And while the last 12 months have seen few high points, I thought I'd start by asking, what was your footballing highlight of 2020? Yeah, this is a difficult one to try and pin down. I was just saying to you off air that it feels 2020 feels like a void of anything but um obviously there was a lot of football but my highlight my favorite moment i think it's quite a mainstream moment but it's related to barcelona's 8-2 defeat to bayern munich in the champions league quarterfinals um it's not specifically the game although the game was amazing um i think bayern were one nil up inside five minutes four one up at half time Goals were flying in. We saw an amazing own goal from Alaba. And uh, they, were, they were playing the um, Seven Nation Army after every goal. So by the end of the match, it sounded like that Glastonbury in 2017 when everyone was singing Jeremy Corbyn's name, um, which was great. But the highlight for me from the year was finding out the next day that Coutinho, who had, tra- who had transferred to Barcelona from Liverpool for 150 million, had a clause in his contract that if he won the Champions League, Barcelona paid Liverpool five million, but the clause didn't specify which club he was playing for. Right. And he was on loan at Bayern Munich. And he came on with 10 minutes to go, set up a goal and then scored the seventh and then the eighth, (laughs) which was just a beautiful moment. So, yeah, that's my highlight. Brilliant. So my highlight, being an Ireland and an Arsenal fan, it's been a real struggle to come up with something. There was that FA Cup win. But I'm going to take a, a highlight from the League of Ireland, actually. And actually, appropriately, which you'll see when we speak to our guest, involves an Italian team. So the Dublin team, Shamrock Rovers, who we've spoken about before, drew AC Milan in the Europa League. And they played them in Dublin, in Talla. And unfortunately, there was no fans allowed in. But during the game... Aaron Green, who plays for Rovers, uh, was marking Zlatan for a free kick. And he kept looking behind the goal. But Zlatan, looking at the back of his shirt, just said, Hey, Green, what are you, what are you looking at? What do you keep looking at? And Aaron Green said, My son is the ball boy behind the, the goal. Nice. And then Zlatan said, Well, Zlatan's going to make him happy by giving him my jersey today. And, and appropriately speaking about photography... There's a great photo of Zlatan shirtless 
uh, towering over Aaron Green, but they're both looking in the direction behind the goal, and he's got this huge smile on his face, and you can tell it's the exact moment he said, like, that's my son, I'm going to give you the jersey. So I thought that was a great uh, highlight from 2020. Yeah, that's amazing. I haven't seen that clip. I'll have to dig that out. That sounds amazing. I'll send it on. Uh, so I've really been looking forward to talking to today's guests because since we first published the Pokemon Goal magazine, imagery and photography have been just as important and in many respects more important than the quality of writing. So I'm delighted that our guest today is Giacomo Cosua, a photographer based in Venice, Italy, who has worked for publications such as Rolling Stone and Dazed magazines and with world famous brands such as Adidas, AC Milan and ACF Fiorentina. He's also the official photographer and content creator for Venezia FC. So welcome to the Pogum Gold podcast, Giacomo. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Apologies for my butchering of any Italian pronunciations, but I'll start with you, Giacomo. What was your highlight of 2020? Uh, yeah, that's a tough, tough question, but uh, probably like uh, as I'm really involved uh, in, uh, in my club in Venice, um, was the, the last game of uh, like last season uh, that actually is supposed to end uh, like in, um, in May, I think. But uh, because of the situation, uh, we ended up like uh, in, at the end of July. And uh, on the last match, uh, Venezia FC won like 3-1. And so that means uh, against uh, Perugia. And um, so it, thanks to this uh, score, uh, we... We saved from uh, the relegation, so yeah, it was like uh, last ma- last match, very important one. So probably, it's like a good memory of the of the year. Yeah, brilliant. So in each of our episodes today, we've asked our guests what got them first interested in football, and in your respect, got you interested in the sport, but also photography. So yeah, like uh, I started like you know as like a kid in Italy, probably like uh, it's it's quite common um, like to be interested in football. And uh, when I was like fifteen, uh, randomly with a uh, with a friend, uh, we started a um, course uh, to be a referee. And uh, so that's probably like uh, the the closest like memory I have. Uh, like before, I, obviously I was like watching the games on TV, and then actually. I don't know, like randomly, because uh, if you're a referee, you can go for free to see any any games in Italy. Right. So there was there, there was like a good reason, and second also because uh, they were paying some money, you know, to 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 be a referee for the games. Okay. And and actually, yeah, when I started, I was like 15, and I've been a referee for like uh, 13 years. I quit when I decided to to move out from Italy. So I moved to to UK, and that was like uh, the period that I understood that as a referee I could not like uh, like go any any further from the category I was. So it was like uh, it was like still like you know something I like. It was a good good way to do sports, and also I was earning some money, so I could not uh, like uh, ask for more uh, apart from like the you know like the, the troubles of being a referee. Sport photography was something that came uh, much much later. So when when I uh, when I moved to London, um, I studied like uh, photojournalism and documentary photography. Um, I wanted to improve that uh, that part of my of my career because I started actually when I was uh, like 21 or 22, uh, while I was still doing the university in Italy. Uh, I started as a writer journalist. Uh, for a local newspaper. I stayed in London for like a couple of years and then I, I moved to Germany uh, to live, to Berlin. And uh, I started working as photographer, like, but more like, um, like traveling, like uh, magazines and newspapers. And then um, I decided to go back home and I had to like uh, reinvent a bit myself uh, going back home because Venice is... Uh, Probably like everybody knows Venice, but if you have to live there, uh, uh, apart from the big events, there was not much uh, to do, uh, like uh, speaking like job wise. And uh, like randomly, I got a call from an agency and they told me, hey, can you go to this uh, press conference? Because uh, uh, Filippo Inzaghi has been appointed as uh, the new coach of uh, Venezia FC. So I, I, I was there to do like some videos, some photos. 
And I thought, okay, maybe this year, you know, like I don't have much to do. I have a press card. Uh, so I can, instead of like just going to, to see the games at the stadium, I can actually go there and, uh, and take photos and maybe something interesting, you know, like was a, was kind of a hobby, like a good combination. And starting from there, my career now on focused on sport photography. Giacomo, I'm sure we'll get onto your photography, which is, which is great. I've had a look this afternoon, but I just wanted to ask before we do, what is it like being a referee, especially in uh, Italian football? <laughs> what is that like? Exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, first, it was like uh, you had to learn a lot of stuff, you know, like all together, all the rules. And then you start with the, with the kids. Um, and I started actually very young uh, as a referee because uh, 15 years was like the, the minimum age uh, to, to start as a referee. So usually like uh, the, the kids I was a uh, referee the first and the second year, they are one, two years younger than me. So it was, it was a, quite a challenge at the time because sometimes, you know, if you are like uh, older, maybe you have some more respect. But if they see you like your same age, uh, yeah, I think it was, a, it was a, a, a good way to grow, to learn, you know, how to behave in, in very different situations. The referee is always connected with like mistakes and errors and everything and how you can improve and to, to avoid to make it uh, that error again. For me, it was like a very, a very good school uh, to, to grow up, you know, and to to be, to be involved in very different situations, yeah. So let's take a dive into sports photography and in particular, the great tradition of Italian football. Kozovic, Valero, Valero against his old club. with the pace is he here to get past Skriniar yes oh yes oh yes oh yes when you think Calcio you think Milan Turin Naples Rome Venice does not cross your mind you're talking about the most beautiful city in the world many fans travel over an hour by boat to visit the beloved and historic Penzo the oldest complete stadium in all of Italy football about to happen here in Venice <laughs> Well, you can tell us the context of the pictures that are included with your photo essay in issue six. Yeah, I was actually thinking that uh, like in a uh, in few days, I'm going to shoot the same game of last year that you had in your issue. Yeah, so it was like a funny combination. Yeah, so uh, when I started doing the like the photography, sport photography, I uh, the first thing it was like to watch what other photographers were doing and in which way they were shooting. So on the, on the pitch, uh, there are, I think, very different kind of category of photography, of photographers, sorry. And, uh, like most of them are working for newspaper or, uh, media agencies. So one skill is like to shoot, you know, like the, the key actions and to send those pictures as fast as possible. That is one of the things that most of sport photographers are doing. Uh, I tried to do something different uh, because for me it was important to not to be just another photographer on the pitch shooting the games, but as uh, my job before was more related to like storytelling, shooting portraits. Uh, I've been working like uh, also in fashion. I was doing a lot of uh, like uh, backstage during fashion weeks in Milan, London, and Paris, and so because of that, I tried to use those skills. Uh, applied to uh, football games, that is uh, pretty unusual probably. And so first things, like many photographers are shooting just like in JPEG and because in, in a way like the, the picture are lighter and they are uh, faster to edit. Uh, in, instead of that, I like to have like the raw file so I could like work more and I have like more information on the picture during the post-production. So for me, it was more important, like the quality of the picture than like delivery the picture like fast. For me, it was like more important to to capture like emotions, faces, portraits, 
and situations, you know, I had like the freedom sometimes, you know, to shoot uh, black and white. It was for me like, what's the story I, I can tell today? That was the, the main thing for me. And I think in, in this way, it was like the way to be different from uh, other photographers. It's interesting what you say about uh, sports photographers having to take the picture and send it so quickly. So often I'm following a live blog of a football game and they'll say a goal has scored and there'll be a photo with it straight away, even though it was taken like one minute ago, which is amazing. So it's quite unusual for a photographer to take raw photography and then edit. Are you a bit of an outlier in that sense? Um, I mean, it obviously depends on, you know, like, uh, for example, when I work with the Venetia FC, we have to deliver the picture fast uh, for social media. Like technology is helping us a lot now. Uh, because, uh, you know, through the camera, I can, uh, you know, I have like a, an app on my phone and I can send pictures straight from the camera to the phone and from the phone to a cloud. So in this way, I don't even need to like open a computer. But, you know, there is a colleague of mine getting a picture from the cloud. And those are the pictures that goes immediately like on social media because, you know, there is a goal or we have like a gallery during the game to, to show. From the goal to the picture delivered, maybe it's passing like 30, 40 seconds, something like that. And this is a, a kind of photography. And then like after the game, you know, the day after, I'm going to edit like, uh, you know, a bunch of photos. And I need like, you know, probably like a few hours to check all of them and edit. So, yeah, this is like the, the way I, I'm working if I work for the club. And I think it's a, it's a good combination of things. It's interesting you said you trained as a journalist because in the photo essay in issue six, it is a story. So it's a Serie A game pre the very first lockdown with Fiorentina and Inter Milan. And going by your own Instagram account, Jacobo, which I love, and you mentioned about portrait tour, it seems to be like a study in faces. You've got Lukaku looking like he's about to do something brilliant. And you've Kevin Prince Boateng remonstrating with an op opponent to then when goals are scored and the faces in the crowd. Is that on purpose? Is that like a signature style of you to, to study faces? I know on your own account, you've got actors from the Venice Film Festival, etc. Um, is that kind of a hobby of yours, an interest of yours? Yeah, like uh, I love to take portraits because uh, like for me, it's like, uh, you know, like the real story. And because usually like, especially on football, you know, we are focused on like uh, the, the kick or the action. And for me, it was like more, OK, like let's tell a different story. Uh, let's focus more like on the players, on their faces. I love, you know, the tattoos, on the details, like the shoes or, you know, any any kind of stuff. So um, I like a lot, you know, when they come closer so you can focus and uh and you know just waiting to get the right expression because i know like not so many photographers probably during the game are doing that kind of photography because it's not probably what the newspaper wants you know they have to tell like in one picture everything so for me it's like a way to be different so is the is the same like uh in the picture you can see in the magazine it's like all about like situations and what that picture can can tell to the to the viewer you know this kind of stuff it sounds more enjoyable because the same as when you're covering a game as a reporter or social media manager you almost miss the goals because you're immediately sprung into action or if you don't miss it there's a pressure it sounds more enjoyable that you can kind of look for something else you don't have to capture the main action of the game you're looking out for something else well the best is to do both actually yeah well you don't <laughs> want to miss the goal <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. for me it's less important the player when he's kicking the ball to make the goal for me it's important everything is gonna happen after you know you know when they they enjoy after the goal they they gather all together you know they scream they make everything and the situation now it's it's very complicated because uh without a crowd uh, everything after the goal has been changing so much you know the players are not uh, they, they still enjoy you know the, the fact that they have been doing a goal but there is no more uh, public to share to share the joy so it's uh, it's everything much shorter you know and uh, 
for us as photographers, it's a uh, it's a big problem. Our job has been changing so much in uh, like uh, such a short time, and it, I would say it's uh, it's it's boring now, you know. Right. <laughs> also from uh, also from our perspective, because everything look uh, look a bit the same, you know. Yeah. Giacomo, I wanted to ask you. James mentioned your Instagram, and. I just wanted to comment on a picture you've got of uh, Jurgen Klopp, which is oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's like it's the it's like the most Jurgen Klopp he's ever looked. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just think it's amazing. But but I was I wanted to ask about um, one of the photos in the essay that you've got in the um, Pogue Magol of the. I don't know who the players are, but there's they're kind of tumbling over one another. I think there's like it's like a cloud of limbs just. There's so much movement. Why? Why did you um, choose to include that one? Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. Like uh, I think sometimes you know, like there is like n- not like a real reason when I see a picture and I say, oh, I like it. This one, like just just take it. You know, like you just go with with the, the emotions and like for me, it's like or they have a nice expression, the face is telling something, or there is something funny going on, mm. or. It's a picture that is really telling a story, you know, like when, when there is Boateng fighting, is um, I think he's fighting with Lautaro. Yeah, because that's that in there. He's saying something. Yeah, you know, like th- this kind of situation, that is probably something that, you know, like uh, as a reader, I would love to see also in in, a, in other magazines, you know. So I'm I'm trying to, to be also on the other side and say, what what kind of picture I would lo- I would love to see, you know. And as I have the, the the opportunity to be there and and take them, I, I you know I try to do I try to do that. Yeah, that 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 picture of the 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 sort of coming together of the goalkeeper and the defender and the attacker is just so brilliant. It's kind of like it's like a Renaissance painting when people are like falling yeah. over each other. It's fantastic. And there's the hand gestures, which are typically Italian, of course. We're so delighted to have these photos in the, this issue. I think it looks great. And also like harking back to when we could have supporters in the stadium. And so your day job at the moment is with Venezia FC. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. I'd love to find out a little bit more about what that's like, what lower league football in Italy is like, because we're only really exposed to Serie A in this part of the world. I know just from doing a little bit of research that Venezia FC, I think it's their stadium holds about seven, 8,000 and it's the second oldest continuously used stadium in Italy, if I'm right. Venice is already is a kind of idyllic, iconic location, but it's quite an interesting, it's quite a modest stadium with this epic backdrop. So tell us a little bit about your club. Yeah, like uh, the stadium is, uh, yeah, is like the second oldest. The first one is the Luigi Ferraris in Genoa, uh, but actually, like the the one in Genoa is rebuilt it somehow, like they they make it new. So for me, like our stadium is probably like the oldest, and <laughs> and it's also our one of our big problems, um, because the stadium has never been like rebuilt it to make it like in in the modern era of football and. In Venice, we have been speaking about like probably 60 years about uh, building a new stadium outside of the city. But so far, nobody has been able to, to do that. At the moment, uh, the maximum capacity, I think, is uh, 7,500. So Venezia has been like in Serie A for like uh, three seasons during like uh, 1998 uh, and 2001. And then, uh, um, like, a club has uh, suffered a lot of, like, uh, money problems and has been, like, uh, relegated to low league for, for quite a, a few years. And then, like, 2015-16 uh, has been bought by, like, uh, by an American fund. And since, since then, the club has been, like, restarting its life somehow. Serie B is, I think it's a very competitive category still. They call it the championship of the Italian people because it covers, it covers, like, you know, from north to center to south. And Serie B, there are a lot of still, a, a lot of people attending at the stadiums. And you always hope to be promoted, like, in, in Serie A, you know? So that's, uh, that's the main hope for uh, probably any club when they start. Because it's like the dream to go back, you know. Yeah, for us at the moment, actually, I like to work there because first is uh, the club of my city. So, you know, 
I don't need to work for a club that I'm not really supporting in like my soul, you know, like maybe like as job, you can go to work for other clubs. And obviously you are happy if the club is, is doing good. But, you know, like I grew up uh, going to the Stadio Penso when I was kid and watching the games there. So it's, uh, you know, every time I go to the stadium, uh, it's uh, it's like a, more like a pleasure than uh, like a proper work some, sometimes. The games are tough. There is a very huge uh, difference from, from Serie A if we speak about budgets, uh, for example, or uh, what the, the player are earning. Our Serie B is, uh, is it's, it's growing, but uh, I think, you know, sometimes some games are uh, not as, per, uh, the, the performance of the players are not as good as it's supposed to be, but uh, I enjoy that. It's, uh, it's not easy to, to be promoted. I love the Instagram feed of the club, Giacomo. You you have like morning sunrises over Venice. It's not quite Sunderland, in all respect to Black Cats fans. But if there's something like beautiful about the location. And then, well, Italians are impossibly cool anyway, aren't they? There's a lot. Of, there is a kind of a fashion element to your to your Instagram account. Is that all down to you? Uh, like it's a mix, uh, like this year we have been changing like, uh, the marketing manager. Also that, like the idea of the club, it's to tell like the story of the club and the story of the city in the same way. So this year at, uh, at the club, we have, uh, we are like two photographers and has been, they, they are starting, a, uh, like a project is called a VFC air and we have like a kind of like photography in residency which is American, which is like more dedicated uh, to be in the city for like a few months and, and you know, to have the freedom of shooting. So those pictures are not uh, directly uh, related by me, but it's more about this, this project, with, um, you know, with, which, I, which I love because it's cool that the club is opening from, you know, different perspective, but... Also, like all the players' presentation this year, we have been shooting the new players uh, in Venice, uh, trying to be in very different locations. Uh, it could be like uh, one of our islands or, you know, like one of iconic location. Uh, it could be some Ark Square or, you know, like some other places. We are lucky that anywhere we, we can go to shoot anything, it's, uh, it's uh, helping a lot to have, you know, to have a city like Venice. And we are proud ambassadors. I just wanted to comment on their beautiful kit they have as well. It's such unusual colours, but it's uh, it, it must be a, a dream for you as a photographer to have a kit like that. Yeah, so uh, so the history of the, the, our colours is before 1987, uh, Venezia was uh, just uh, black and uh, green. And they decided to, um, to put together the Venezia Club and Mestre, which is like this, uh, the city in their homeland. And the Mestre had like the colors orange and black. So at the end, they put together a new, new jersey and it became like uh, orange, uh, uh, black and green, uh, which uh, is one of the very few clubs in the world, I think, which has like three colors on the on the jersey. This has been like a lot of fans has been like discussing on that, uh, a lot of troubles anytime because you know some of some of our old supporters are still supporting just the black and the green, and some others say uh, their their identity is more like uh, orange and black, you know. But as as new supporter i i like the the combination of the three colors and we are lucky that this year is the fifth or the sixth year we have uh, nike as a sponsor and they they came out uh every year with very very cool uh jerseys yeah i think i'm gonna buy the kit just based yeah. on yeah <laughs> yeah the especially the away jersey this year has been like a total sellout uh, everywhere I'm, to, I'm keen to know because uh well we have this issue in ireland and the uk what is the fan reaction to american owners uh well i think so far they bring the money and they buy the players <laughs> I mean, before before the Americans, we had like a Russian owner, and when there was like the the big economic uh, crisis with uh, also with Russia, um, he left the club in uh, you know like in very difficult situation, and the club has been then bought by the Americans. So you know like it's uh, it's kind of geopolitical 
funny story related to our club. But so far, uh, you know, like uh, nobody has been really like uh, complaining about having like uh, an American ownership. Uh, also because uh, especially this year, they are like trying, you know, relaunching hard many different projects. And so, so far, I think the, the city is, uh, is happy about that. You know, it's like just not using the name of the city, but just putting back like a team together after many years uh, of bankruptcy and money problems and uh, and so on. We love having your work in the magazine and it's been brilliant to explore further ahead of this podcast. I think you've recruited two new Venezia fans wow. for sure. That's great. We've said that photography has always been as important as the writing and so your work has been a brilliant addition and hopefully we can feature you again in the future. So thank you very much for your chat today, Jacobo. It's been brilliant. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me here. And, and to you, Taylor, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me, James. No problem. And that's it for the latest episode of the Paul McGold podcast. Listen out for future editions with more guests who've contributed stories, art, photography and more to both the magazine and website. And if you'd like to get involved, you can contact us on social media at Pope McGoal. And for more features like this, order your copy of the brand new issue 6 from pogmagol.bigcartel.com Join us next time on the Pogmagol podcast.